Well, it's a topic that's actually become more inflammatory the more we talk about it, and most solutions involve more finger pointing. I'm talking, of course, about the incivility crisis, which I'm actually calling a virus. Right now, it's mostly harsh rhetoric and threats, but this is a path that leads to dark conclusions like the one met by 15-year-old Lissandro, Lissandro Jr. Guzman, who was killed in a machete and knife attack in the Bronx. This was on June 20th. I'm sure you remember his murder shock in the Bronx community, which obviously has seen its share of incivility. His funeral and vigil services were presided over by Father Jonathan Morris, who joins us now in the studio. Father Morris, thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's been intense uh, last few days. Very sad. Uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've got so many relatives in, in the Bronx, and you know, this is the first time I've ever heard people talking about moving out, like, you know, like just afraid. Uh, angry. Uh, yeah. it's, it's how was it? Uh, you know, I've read the articles and, and the things that you talked about and how you praised the family uh, for not seeking vengeance. But this was a kid who wanted to be a New York City police officer. Yeah, it was a mistaken identity killing by a gang called the Trinitarios. And uh, a lot of people have said to me, ah, because it's because they're get coming across the border illegally. And this is no, these were members of the gang. These were kids who were born in the Bronx who spoke English as their first language, just to be very clear about it. Um, and the situation is a tragic um, lack of meaning in these young kids. And with, the, in my opinion, also a lack of, um, of uh, role models in their lives. Parents uh, missing, fathers, fatherless homes. Um, and these kids who are looking for meaning in their life and looking for community, and they find it in the wrong places. And uh, this tragedy is, is a result of that. Yeah, but and the things, though, that spark something like this is so insignificant, so trivial. Uh, and then to have a gang of them uh, drag this kid out of a bodega and, and to see it is, is horrifying. And as much as everyone, you know, wants to feel sympathetic with respect to circumstances that create this, it's, it's hard to, to say, you know, who's safe? And then we yeah. see on a national level, we have one politician today whose life was threatened, his family was threatened. We've had other politicians who are saying, hey, be vocal, get in people's faces, uh, make people pay for having a political opinion. This is frightening. This is a frightening path that we're on, isn't it? People are on, on edge today, and I think um, social media um, has a lot to do with it. For example, this killing was sparked, presumably, it seems, based on the, the reports from the police, by a video that went, went out that disrespected a, 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 one of the gang members or his sister, and then one thing led to another, and it became physical. Um, Yes, that's gang life. And maybe you say, well, we're, I'm not involved in gang life. This isn't going to happen. But on social media, things that are digital sometimes turn into real life. And we, I, I believe we are seeing that now in the political uh, realm. And we all have a responsibility from the president all the way down. Um, yes, we can speak our mind and speak very strongly. I, I do it all the time. I'm doing it right now. But we have to do it in a respectful way. Well, I, certainly it's one thing to, uh, for a politician to, to say things in a certain way, but when someone's having dinner somewhere, like a Sarah Sanders, I mean, she's, 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 the, she's in a press office. She's yeah. not making decisions. Yes. She's not the president. They surround her table. Pam Bondi, the attorney general oh, from, oh. From, from, from Florida, three men oh, it's... in her face yelling, spittle, hitting her on her face. I, at some point, Something's going to happen. It's, it, there's, it's inevitable that someone gets hurt badly at some point. Well, may, maybe we think that it's absolutely fine for me to go into social media and to spew hatred and anger and say things that I might ne never say to somebody in person. But maybe somebody reading what I'm writing will actually do it. And I think that's what we're, see we're seeing right now, that our actions, even in the, in the dark corners of the Internet, have an effect in real life. Right. I just saw that in my parish, 15-year-old innocent kid slaughtered because somebody put up a video. That really happened. That really happened. And I think we have to be very, very careful about it. Um, I find myself sometimes, you know, responding to people on my right. Twitter or Facebook in a way that I wouldn't do personally. I know I have to be more careful about it, not because I'm going to then turn violent, but rather somebody, maybe, it, maybe there's somebody that's unbalanced right. Right. who's reading that and says, oh, I'm going to defend this or that, and that's the reality right now that we're living. Well, the theme of, your, uh, of the vigil on Sunday was be the light, so I think that's good news, uh, good uh, advice for all of us. Thank you. Father, God thank bless you very you. much. Thanks, Always. Charles. Thank you.